Hello, hi, Rajiji. Kamal here from Mirasagi.com and a warm welcome to you today once again on our show, Chat in Chai. Good morning, Kamal ji. How are you? Very well, thank you, Rajiji. How about you? How are you? So far, so good. Watching this um, immigration bill ping pong, uh-huh. ping ponging between the two chambers, and we don't know what's going to happen. Let me uh-huh. let me give you a quick rundown. As you know, Definitely. the yes. Senate bill was passed. Um, But in the House, which is the second chamber of U.S. Parliament, Congress, um, the bill is stuck. They don't want to vote on that bill because the Speaker of the House, who's a Republican, John Boehner, Mm -hmm. he has Mm -hmm. said, I will not bring any vote on the bill. And that's his right. I will not build the I will not bring the bill on the table to for people to vote in the House unless majority of the republicans in the house want to do it okay, okay. now okay. now the interesting thing is the politics is interesting if the bill actually comes to vote it will probably pass because almost all the democrats will vote for it and we need only a few more republican votes and there will be some breakaway votes so if the bill were to be tabled for voting it probably will pass However, mm-hmm. it is the speaker's prerogative not to table the bill. Okay, you can overrule the speaker if you have something called a discharge petition, which means you need an X number of votes. We don't have that many votes. We have enough votes to probably pass the bill, but we don't have enough votes to overrule the uh, speaker. Do you understand? Okay. It's it's okay. a it's a very interesting political situation. Now, another interesting thing about the Republican stand is that. Um, Many of the Republicans probably want the bill to pass. They just don't want to be responsible for coming out and going against their own party in crossing, mm-hmm. in crossing party lines. So we are in a situation where Senate bill is passed. House is not voting on that bill. Um, Republicans in general oppose amnesty or the idea that you can have 11 million voters, um, most of him most of them will vote for, for, for Democrats eventually, uh, or at least okay. a ma- majority of them. So they have no political incentive really to vote for the uh, Senate bill. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing is, one approach that the House took was that they will pass small bills. Instead of having a 2,000 page or a 1,000 page bill, we will pass small bills. Okay. There, even there, the danger that some of the Republicans in the House feel is this, if any bill is passed, then things will end up in what is called conference, which is a negotiation between the two chambers. And if it is in okay. conference, they're worried that um, Democrats will be able to prevail and they will basically uh, get away with, with, with things like amnesty, which um, the Republicans don't want. So they don't even want to vote on small bills in some ways. Okay. okay. And okay. then the last item of news is that um, House is working on its own version of comprehensive immigration. So we are going to have two comprehensive immigration bills, um, um, you know, several hundred pages, if not thousand pages long. Oh. And then okay. the two additional pieces of news are this, and these are the, the uh, final pieces of news. One is that coming Tuesday, um, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that date is, today is on July 18th when we are talking, coming Tuesday, the um, DREAM Act may be proposed in the House. DREAM Act is basically an act focused on uh, providing some legal status to children who were brought here when they were very young and now they can't go, right. to, they can't go to colleges uh, because they are stuck and some of them are very, very bright young people. Okay. So okay. DREAM Act might come through on Tuesday, but we don't know. Um, the overall consensus is nothing is going to happen before the House reconvenes on September 7th after a, mm-hmm. a month-long break, which begins on August 5th. So August 5th through September 6th, the House will be on a break, and that's where most of the politics will happen. Okay. So September 6th, uh, 7th, hopefully we do see something uh, brighter on the on a brighter side, let's say, of the uh, bill that we're talking about today. Let's hope something positive emerges then. We can certainly hope so. Yeah. So, uh, Rajivji, we now have some queries sent in by listeners here on Mira Sangeet. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the first one here is regarding the signature on forms and says, can I send a scan of the forms and can I use an electronic signature on these forms? 
oh no, are you asking USCIS to behave and be a, a part of the modern world? They are not. So uh, other than online forms, other than online forms, there are some forms you can fill online, they will not accept electronic signatures or scanned forms yet. It might take them a few more years to come up to par. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question here. It says, Rajivji, how long will it take to get a receipt notice for my H-1B petition that was not filed with premium processing? Typically, anywhere from a month up is normal, okay? Um, okay especially okay. if you file during the quota. Um, but if it's taking more than that, there's something not right. Also, um, I would very strongly recommend when your employer files the H-1, they write fees checks. Follow through on the fees check, see if they've been cashed. If they've been cashed, you've got nothing to worry about. If they have not been cashed, you need to do some follow-up. Okay, okay. So uh, this is all about it, uh, Rajivji. These were the queries sent in by our listeners this week. Uh, thank you so much once again for being a part of our show today. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Rajivji. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.